Now, I've actually recorded this at the end of the video. Well, at the end of what I was doing, rather than the beginning, because I forgot. Um, first things first, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like the video. You know, if you like the sort of thing I do, then subscribe. I do all sorts of different things, but mostly I try and do test equipment repairs if I can. All right, so I like to fix stuff, and that's what my videos are about. A lot of you already know this because you've you know you've, you already subscribed. But for people that aren't subscribed, make sure you do. You know, um, I'm going to put this at the beginning of the video, not the end. Yeah. Um, also, um, I've just got my first Patreon supporter, so thank you very much for that guy who's uh, supporting me. Um, so if you also want to support my channel and help me to buy items for for doing these kinds of videos, um, you don't have to, you know I think I've got like one dollar a month is the lowest one I think I've, I've got set something like that. So you don't have to contribute very much. Um, it'd be great, much appreciated if you can contribute. Um, if you do five dollars a month or more, then you also get to see um, the pre-release videos. So before I release them to the public, um, they are on Patreon first, and you can see them yourself first before everybody else gets to see them. Um, how what that time period is will probably depend on how many people have seen it. You know, I might wait till everyone's had a chance to see it and then then release it, sort of thing. You know, so it might be a, a day or it might be a week. Don't know. But so if, if you want to support me, please do. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. And um, this is going to go well. Watch the video, you'll find out. Right, so this is a little bit of video. As you probably see the mailbag, I've got this unit here. This uh, Reco Dana. 1992 um, and the issue it has um, if I hopefully remember to trim out a bit of video a different mailbag and insert in the beginning of this bit so you can see it um, is that the channel A input here um, isn't triggering at all if I put an input on it that light doesn't flicker there's no flashing doesn't matter what I do with the input levels that sort of thing it's actually got a few issues so that is one of them. This button here is stuck. All the other ones are actually working. Although this one over here is a little bit sticky. That one is also failing. In fact, I think it might have just gone as I pushed it then. Right, so it, neither of the buttons doing, but that's another issue. Right, I'll get to that. But this channel here is not triggering. Channel B is showing a triggering. If I put the same input on there, that light flax, uh, flick, flickers. Channel C is working fine. Okay, um, but channel A is just like dead. Nothing there. No response. So I'm just going through the uh, service manual section. I've just taken this cover off. I've taken the GPIB board out, which is sitting. Well, it's just here. All right, I've taken it out, and um, it's not currently plugged into power. It was plugged in, but now I've unplugged it to pull it apart. And I'm just going through this, and um, it gets down to this part in the troubleshooting. It says, uh, "Is channel A indicator off?" After you've done these certain conditions, which is to ground the input with a certain trigger level set. Anyway, in this case, it's on all the time, so no. So now I've got to do some testing on IC36 pin 1. And I've got to see whether it's a 1 or a 0, basically, if it's high or low. I'll give you a close up on that. Okay. So it's this bit here, down here. So from this, I'd end this, figure out which, one I, which way I've got to go with these testing. Alright, so I haven't actually looked into this bit yet. Um, so let's get the power cord back up here. Okay, it's powered up. Let's get a meter running so I can actually measure the voltages. Find a ground point. Well, that should be pretty easy. And untangle the leads. Doesn't matter what you do with leads; they always end up tangled. It's quite incredible. All right. That should be a ground point right there. Okay, so IC36 is actually just over here. Okay, this is device. So um, that looks like pin one. I believe that's pin one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There's a one marking there, and the trace comes up. I believe that's correct. If, and that is showing minus one. Minus 1.77 that's showing. Let's check another earth point. Yeah. Okay, so minus 1.77. Or 1.77. So that's interesting. So that isn't the logic one, is it? 
I wonder if I should do some power supply checks. I haven't done that yet. Um, I've actually skipped that part because the rest of it was working, so I thought, oh, it's probably okay. Um, I was looking for some markings, see if I can see any markings where the power supplies are. Sometimes it's that easy. Uh, may not be in this case. Not that I can see. Um, yes, yeah, so I might just do that just to eliminate that as, an, as a possible issue. I know there's going to be 5 volts on there. Yeah, it's fine, it's 5 volts. That's probably what it needs actually. Alright. Um, okay, the fact it says minus 1 is, is interesting. It may have a negative supply going to it though. This is minus 5.1 volts here. This is 1.1 volts, which equalizes the other one, interestingly. Well, close to it. And that's 5 volts. So, yeah, it's got plus and minus 5 volt supply going to this device. Like I said, interestingly, the um, the input triggering just does nothing on that channel. If I like stick that probe in channel B, it's picking up noise and it starts triggering. Whereas channel A just on all the time, so it's not right. So I'm just playing with that again. Yeah, so channel A is just always on. So I need to try and figure out why that is. Um, I notice this relay here looks like it's been changed and it's got an X on it, which immediately catches my attention. I mean, does that mean that, well, is the X saying it's been changed or is the X saying that relay doesn't work? You know, if there's a bad relay switching, then it may not be actually passing through that signal. Um, so I might actually look at the diagrams and see if this relay here is doing any switching in that regard. Because that might just be the simple solution is that this relay is gone. Or one of these other ones is gone, maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, so I'm not quite sure how to interpret this. Because it says, you know, is it logic one? Well... Uh, not really. <laughs> but then, if it's a tri-state, I don't know. Um, refer to section, the channel A and B system in section 6. Is the example if it says it's not a 1. Check indicator, RC1A, Q1. RC1A. Let's have a look at that if I can find it. There's IC1. What is there an IC1A? Interesting. Um, is it Q1 or D1? It's hard to say. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look at diagrams instead. I think of this troubleshooting chart. I'll come right back when I finish doing that. All right, so I've fished out the uh, diagram. I haven't looked at this properly yet. I've well, looked at the diagram, but not compared it to the actual unit yet. Um, so this is the channel A input. This is channel B input. Channel C is on a separate diagram because it's the separate unit down the side here. Um, and it's got a few relays in here, so I've identified what they are just by looking at the diagram. So this one here is a 50 ohm load, so when that one closes, it shows 50 ohms across the input. Okay, so that's simple enough. 
This one here is in series, but across a capacitor. So when that one's shut, it's DC. When it's open, it's AC um, for the coupling. So again, that's easy. Um, if that relay fails, you still get a relay C, in which case it won't be that either. So if either of those have failed, it wouldn't affect what I've got now. It wouldn't actually matter. It would just still read it. Um, then we've got another relay here, which is basically allowing a resistor divider to work. So when it's um, closed, then it goes straight through. But when it's open, it's going through that resistor, and it's got a pull-down resistor here, and a little bypass smoothing system here too. Um, so this is the divider. So that'll be, that'll be the times one by and times ten option, all right? So it's not likely to be any of those relays. Now the interesting thing is you got this relay here, which is what it does. It switches channel A into this section. So this relay switches between channel B or channel A through this section here, which is the channel B section. I'm not quite sure how that bit actually works yet. I haven't actually read the manual in that area to see how that switching works. Um, I know there's the button on the front here which does common A. I, I'm not sure. Let's see if we can identify which one it is. I can hear a click. I just can't find it. I can't feel which one it is. Um, I can feel something over here. Can't tell. I can hear it. I just can't tell which one it is. I might have to do it by measurement. Um, relay H, which is that middle one, which is actually one I was I could feel it on. I think it is that one. Um, so it's probably a good to that commenting on the A button on the front there, so it's probably that thing there. Um, so like I said, that will link channel 1, channel 2 together and disconnect the channel B input. Now the interesting thing is, when I link, when I do that linking together, so it's on now, and I shove a frequency in, you might be able to see this unfortunately, if I find my lead and I'll stick that on channel A so channel A and channel B are linked together and get the thing to trigger hopefully all right so if I do that so it's linked together the channel B is showing it's triggering channel A is still not showing anything okay um, I'll stick on channel B, nothing until I unlink it and then channel B shows it's working. Okay, So the channel B is working in that way. All right? So it's getting up to the channel B section. So it gives me a bit of an idea of where to look. Um, so if it comes through this way, the trigger indicator is working. Right, because that trigger indicator comes from this section somewhere. I don't know exactly where yet. I haven't pinpointed that. All right, so it means it must be getting through here, through this relay into this section. But it means it must be somewhere after this point, where it's not triggering. Um, so, what what I've noticed here is that it's a relay just here. These two sections are basically identical. But, well, at least from what I can tell, they're very, very similar. But this has got an extra relay in it, RLE1. Um, I'm not sure why that is there. But what I'm thinking is that I could probably do some testing in here and just probe around and try and find that signal. 
because um, it should be coming in here going through these buffers and amplifiers and what have you and um, coming back out this is for the trigger levels I believe it means it's got trigger level output on, on here um, so I believe that this is what's driving the triggering in this section here so I think it's going to be somewhere in here and, and out of all this likelihood well there's only a couple of things in a relay I'd say are likely to fail and that one is that relay and the other thing is these are literally two capacitors there's one here there's another one up here um, so that's what I'm looking at if these capacitors are gone it could be a power supply fault so I'm going to do some measurements in the power supply section in this area and I shall look at this relay closely as well and see if I can determine what's going on there and see if I can get a signal on both sides of it for example I expect I should be able to see a signal on both sides of that relay um, as long as that option you know, is set to channel A you know um, that should be there and I believe that they should then come through this um, diode bridge here which will be acting as an AC to DC converter um, I believe maybe um, and then it will come through here this uh, op amp here as well so this is where I've got to look at, is right here so it's, it's looking quite promising right now as far as identifying what's going on at least um, so let's just have a look um, actually I might use my scope because that will be a bit better for this So, pull that probe off there. Now, first things first, I've got to find out where these bits are. I'm going to have to measure on the bottom because I think there's a shield on the bottom. Yeah, there is. So, I don't even want to have to mess around taking that off. Probably I'll measure it all from the top. So, what I need to do is find, to start with, uh, C79. And I'm pretty sure it's all going to be inside this can here somewhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't see it. It might be on the back. It might be on the back. Um, but I want... R113, let's just look at there, R113, that must be on the top surely. Come on, where are you? This isn't going to be very successful, is it, if I can't find the parts to test? Hmm. Yeah, okay, this could be interesting. I might have to look at this in more detail first before I record the video. Let me try and find them. Well, let's do some voltage checks then. Let's just do that. Um, actually, I can just go for that too. What the hell? Set up for it. So, I am looking for voltages on IC34, which is this one right here. Um, I'm looking for 11.2 volts on pin 7. And I'm getting 10.3, a little bit low. And on pin 4, I should be getting negative 11.2. Hold on a second, is that not updating? Might have my measurement set up wrong on my scope. Hold on a second. Just try this again. That part there for start. Okay, right, so that is negative 10.8 volts and pin 7, wasn't it? And positive 11.2 11.17 so actually that's okay 
So it was a hangover measurement. It was um, wasn't triggering right. So the negative rail is actually slightly high, which makes you wonder if the negative rail's got an issue with um, a capacitor, because um, it's putting towards new, uh, towards the zero volt. That could happen. Um, Just trying to see if I can identify any ripple or anything on there. Not really. So I'm getting a difference in voltage now. I'm getting 10.6 volts here now. Negative 10.6 volts. That one's still the same. So I'm suspicious about that power rail actually. Could be some noise in there. If I um, yeah, you can see a little bit of noise in there. If I um, slide right down, I oh, sorry, speed the time base right up, then the voltage reading is dropping, and I'm seeing some noise. Yeah, it could be an issue there. Yeah, I don't know. It's unconfirmed. I mean, the voltage is close. Um, it's not exactly right. Just do some other measurements somewhere else if I can. Uh, just looking for big resistors, <laughs> but there's a couple of resistors here I could probably measure if I can find the things. 82, 83, 84, 85. Uh, I don't see them. There might be for something else. Yeah, I don't know. This is going to be boring video. Right, so, um, so there's voltage on that chip, which is correct, uh, or at least pretty close to correct. It may or may not be an issue. Um, Q4. Where the hell is Q4? Might be somewhere else on the board. Could well be actually. C1. I think that's all at the back end of that board in that corner up there somewhere. I think. So it might be underneath the um, OCXO. Because it's all power supply section, that's all up here. So it could be that's remote. That's why I can't find an area. Um, R97. And there's that C seventy nine again. Will that tell me anything? I'm not sure. It puts a DC bias on Q seventeen. This is I'll explain what I'm talking about. Um, so you got a power supply section here. So Q four is this one here, and you got the main supply was. A, Tied bus there, which has got C1, which is what I was suspicious of. 5.6 volt Zener on the base of Q4, which is from a negative 11.2 volt supply, which then comes up here. So it's R97 is just there, which is giving that DC bias into the input onto Q17. Um, probably on issue. That's the chip I measured there. I mean, yeah, this one's a bit low. Or oh, rather, a bit high. Um, 
so I'm a little bit suspicious. I might measure Q30, uh, IC35, the same pins on that one, and see if they have the same issue. Because they have a separate supply, possibly. There is some isolation. Um, so let's look at this one. Ten point two, ten point eight. So this one's point four volt, just like this one is. Point four volt down, or rather up. Um, yeah, I'm a little suspicious about that. But channel B is working, and that's part of channel B. That's channel A. So it probably isn't really an issue because channel B is working, or at least a trigger light is working. So. Um, what I really need to look at is where that is disappearing. Q21, can I see that? This Q22. Don't see it. Well, I suppose I can look at the junction of D18, D20, which look like they're up here. Is D18, and that's D20. So if I probe there, that's the output of Q21. Let's increase this input level a little bit just to make sure I've got a better signal. And I'm seeing that on the scope. At least there's noise. Yeah, I'm seeing that frequency on the scope, but the counter isn't measuring it. I'll turn off that common thing. Come on, turn off. The common won't turn off. Why don't I turn off now? What have I done wrong? Let's reset it. A couple of buttons are on the way out, so it might be causing some problems. Okay. Let's measure that again. Yep, still there. So that is on. Now what I could do is compare the output from these. Right, so that's I'm measuring at the junction of those two diodes there. Right. If I measure at the junction of those two instead with common on the B channel, because that then feeds through and it should be basically the same. Let's just look at some component values, let's have a quick look there. They look identical. Yeah. Those sections are the same. All right, so I, I can see that I'm getting a DC offset of 7.5 volts with a approximately 3.2 volt deviation. So if I come over to these diodes and come on up channel, come on, come on up. Now it doesn't want to work. Come on up channel. I think I've locked the button up. I think a button's locked up. How's that for timing? Hold on a second. These buttons are gradually failing as I'm working on this thing. I'm going to have to replace all these buttons before I can troubleshoot this thing. That's going to be annoying. Yeah, the whole unit's locked up. There's a button problem. Here we go. Right, got a comment. So this button over here is playing up. Put 
probably can't see that, but it's one of the ones here. You have to replace these buttons, it's bloody annoying. Alright, but it's alright, I expected to do that, but it's just a shame they're playing up now. <laughs> uh, okay, now let's check this one. Now, this is different. This is different. That's approximately 1 volt, but with 3.5 volt deviation. Or standard deviation, right? So that's interesting. And what's more interesting is that frequency doesn't measure the same either. Oh, there we go. Now I've got my triggering right. But yeah, that's different, and it shouldn't be different. They should be basically the same. So why does this one here have a voltage holding it up? I'm sure you can see that in the camera, but yeah, so here I'm getting one volt IMS with about 3.3 volt or 3.5 volt um, deviation it's got in there, standard deviation, right? So, um, well, 3.2 volt peak to peak if you want to measure it that way, okay? So, 3.2 volt peak to peak, one volt IMS pretty much. With no DC offset, okay. And over here, they should both be doing exactly the same thing right now. They're linked together. Um, and this one has got a, a big DC offset of seven odd volts and two point six volt peak to peak. Yeah, seven point four volt DC offset. So that is in line with me thinking that, you know, there's something wrong in here. So where is it getting that voltage from? I mean, there's a, there's a diode ring here, and it's got a 5 volt supply going to it, so in theory you should get 5 volts coming through. But then you've also got a negative 5 volt here, right? So that should be pulling it back down again. So I should balance it around 0 volts. Which is what this side is doing. This side is not. So is it a blown diode causing a bad offset? Possibly. Possibly. Let's have a look. Shut down. Diode test. Okay, those two dials measure okay. So, unlikely. Which means it's probably before that point. Okay, so that's those two dials here I just measured. I didn't measure the other two, but I just measured those D18 and D20. Um, and they measure okay. I suppose I could check those two as well, 1921. Just to be absolutely sure, which are these two here? These appear to be shock keys because of the uh, the voltage offset, so 0 0.27 volts, 0 0.273 is, so they appear to be shock keys. Yeah, those, they're all fine. Those diodes are all fine. So, that narrows it down to that section there, as far as I'm concerned. So I need to figure out why there could be a DC offset. Op amp? Maybe. So 
it's got this divider here right so this is probably some input scaling or something Now these are both in parallel anyway so again that doesn't matter they're both in parallel right now so it has to be in there so what could be giving a DC offset hmm because there's plus 11 volts coming through here there's a Zener there. Could be a bad Zener. Um, I don't know if that's local to this area. D30, I don't know if I see those. No, there's D30 right there. Let's have a look. Well, it looks okay in this regard at least. Yeah. And I can see how much D31 is that I'll do direct comparison with the opposite opposite side. Compare like for like. Yeah, it's the same. The measure the same. So okay, it's not that diode. Yep, that's identical. Um so that diode's okay. So that means I know it should be 11.2 volts coming in at that point there. And that means that should be about 8.5 volts at the negative end of that diode. So let's have a look for that. Put it on voltage would help. getting 7.8 there, negative 7.8 and that is negative 11 so that's why it's slightly out but okay it's that looks about right um, oh that's probably at the front or not, hold on hold on a minute yeah I did, sorry, that's 11 volts and that's 7.9 yeah okay so I had the pros back to front again that's a positive supply why is it negative <laughs> it's fine it's me with the pros back to front um so and D5 should have negative 11.2 volts that appears to be D5 just there so that's that rail just there negative 10.7 so slightly out but that's okay we knew that um, so the input to here looks correct the input to here looks correct I hope that's on camera got off all right um, so that's right there and that's right there so something is not working right. That one passes straight through. That one passes straight through. All goes through a capacitor. I'm guessing that is when it's um, monitoring channel C. I guess that shuns that down. So that is just a guess. Um, so that DC offset, if it's not coming through here, it must be coming through here. So I need to look at pin 6 by the looks of it. Or junction of R167188 if I can find them. <laughs> um, yeah, I think they must be on the bottom of the board. Must be service mount or something. I can't see them. So pin 6. 8.1 volts. Hmm. And pin 6 on this one should be the same. 
It's not. That's 0 0.1. This. This part here is not output in the correct voltage, it would say. So pin 3, which is one of its inputs, is showing 0, pretty much. 0, 0, well, 0 0.0026, to be precise. Pin 2 is showing 3.7. On this one here, pin 2 is showing 0, pin 3 is showing 0. Ah, so pin 2 input is showing a voltage, but that is fed back from the output. Right through this voltage divider network here. And these are separate dividers. So I probably need to measure that relay. Um, Q21 base. Oh, I mean a meta. Where the hell is Q21? I can't find that. It must be surface mount on the bottom of the board. Because I cannot find it. Must be. Because um, it should be right in its vicinity, but you know, it must be on the back of the ball. Um, that goes into that diabetes. Oh, well, it should be the same voltage getting over there, and that's that DC offset that's getting here. So, is the voltage wrong because the op amp? Let's get down here. So is the voltage wrong coming out of here because the op amp is seeing a divided because this is basically a voltage divider into pin 2, right? Pin 2 is reading a voltage. It shouldn't be. So is that because it's got a voltage coming in or is it got a voltage coming out which is then going back into itself? Which one? Anyway, these are a CA3140EX That sounds familiar. That does sound very familiar. I'm wondering if I've got some. I will have to have a look. Well, it's been 33 minutes of me waffling so far. Waffling. Okay, I was almost right. These parts I've got are RCA3240E. Um, these are actually out of the road and sports. That's what they use then. But these are not quite the same. These are dual versions of what's in here. Whether or not I can drop one of these in and use it, I don't know. Um, I will have to look at the pinouts and do a comparison, but if they are pin for pin, um, identical at least in some way, I might be able to do that and just drop them in there and just use it as testing. Right now I'm suspecting that that op amp is, is failed. That's where my head is right now. Um, it could be something external to that, but I believe that's what the part is that's gone wrong. Alright, so I'm not totally convinced that the op amp is the issue, it's fairly likely, but I'm just going to take this bottom shield off, which is a bit of a pain because it's actually soldered on through pins that come right through. Um, but thankfully I've got this desoldering gun, which works really well, and um, I can use this to get the thing off. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend you get one, because things like this are a nightmare otherwise. It gets a lot easier one of these things. <coughs> Still blocked. I think it needs clean. I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm saying how good it is to get one. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, giving it a clean. Come back to where we were. Yeah. Hopefully it's clean enough.
Sorry about the noise, there's not much I can do about it, I'm afraid. Okay. Now we'll get these ones here, which are going to be kind of awkward. I might take the front panel off, actually. Yeah. Let's uh, take the front panel off. Can't quite get to them like that. Great fun. Thankfully, they make the getting a front panel off this thing quite easy. It's something I actually have to do anyway because the um, all the buttons need replacing, so it's not like it's a waste. Um, Go on, turn. Oh, that's not doesn't want to turn. Okay, this is going to require a little bit of percussive maintenance. Sometimes when things get stuck, you just have to give them a bit of a tap, and then you're right after that. Yep, is that one? That one, and this middle one's different because it's on a socket, which actually makes it easier because it means I don't have to actually take the thing off. So that's good. So you can see now it's got to unscrew these. There's probably a special tool you can get for these to actually undo these. You know, it goes into slots or something. I don't have it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there probably is some kind of tool we can use. Screws that side, don't pull the panel off. Conscious I've got the camera a bit lower than normal, so it might keep going out of shot. So if that's the case, I'm sorry, but I thought I'm trying to give you a better view instead of uh, close up. Okay, now it should just pull off. On like um, header pins, which might require a little bit of assistance, also. Okay, try and just get it started. There we go, that sews off. Alright, so if you haven't seen my other video, when I refix a uh, Rack Aldana 1991. Well, I'll do the buttons and everything on it. It's almost identical. So, um, you know, if you haven't seen that yet, go and have a look. If this one interests you. I think I did it about two months ago. Can't remember. Something. Okay. There we go. That's a shield off. Let's have a look. See what's under it. Now, uh, that is channel A, that's channel B. So, I'm just looking to see if I can see any kinds of burnt tracks or bad joints or anything simple like that because you never quite know. It might be something really basic. Um, you know, I might get lucky when I'm trying to take the, uh, the IC out and have to replace that. But I don't think we're going to be that lucky. What I am looking at is um, this is that little relay which does that switching. There's a bit of bare trace there. There and there, it's bare traces. And of course, there's also a through hole here, too. So, there's a few possibilities there with things that could go wrong. Um, I don't see any burn traces, I don't really see any bad joints.
through holes the same always suspicious of because they can fail. Um, resistors look okay. I can't see any signs of burnt resistors or anything like that. Visually, it all looks fine. Yeah. So this is the IC just here, the op amp. And this is like some the glue there. Something just here. Yellow lumps. There, there. There as well. There and there. What's that? Who's that stuff? That's interesting. Looks a bit like surface mount glue. Could it be? Could it be that glue's gone off and it's more it making it short? Let's have a look. If I can get this off without damaging anything. Oh no. Looks like silver smell glue. Do some over here as well. Hmm. Interesting. I'm pretty sure it's not meant to be there. Yeah. Anyway, um Yeah, I mean I can't visually see anything here. I might just take this front panel right off actually and unplug it. There we go. So I need to repair this anyway. It's a shame I sold the other one because I could have swapped the front panels around. <laughs> take the pan take the front off and swap it. Anyway, all well, that work, but never mind. It's sold now. So this one needs doing anyway, it needs doing properly. We'll just save me some work. There's somebody else had the fun of changing all the buttons. Anyway. Um Yes. I'm losing the plot now. What am I supposed to be doing? I have forgotten. Where's my train of thought gone? It seems to have derailed somewhat. Yes. Well, right. I was looking for those transistors, which. Uh, so, you got this one here. I want to check these. Because if there's a fault with one of those, it could also cause a problem. Um, it could, uh, potentially the same symptoms. So there's two transistors. There's one there. And there's one here. I just need to identify which one's which. That one's really close to the diodes. Um, so it's likely that's Q21. It's probably in the manual, but you know. Uh, yeah. um, and it's got a 100 ohm resistor. One side, that's Mark 101. So yeah, that'll be that's Q21 there. So I want to check that for a start, just to verify it's not shorted or something. Um, and then we'll have a look at that and go from there. Diatist. Where's a comma? Of course, I could look at the diagram and actually work it out and think about it logically, but you know, I'd rather just do testing. There you go, 0 0.74. 0 0.74, yeah, it's okay. Um, and then we've got this one here. We have lost it. It's got the same marking, so it's probably the same pinout. 0 0.68. 0.39 that's different could be something external to it um, so that is on the emitter that's base and emitter 
Base emitter junction. It's got lower. No, this can't be right. This is shown as a PMP. Let's have a look. 181, 181. Um, yeah, these are Q17. There you go. There's 181, well, 180, 180 here. Okay, so that is Q17 I'm looking at here. So it's not the right one. So I've got to find Q25. So you guys on pin 6, let's follow that, shall we? Um, whoever the hell pin 6 is. Um, okay, pin 1 is the top right corner. Oh, so that's pin 1 there. So therefore that's pin 6. It comes along here and goes to a through hole. Oh, of course it does. And then vanishes, no doubt. So is that one of the main parts on the other side? There's a transistor here. Is that... Q25. Yes, it is. Right, okay. So, at least we know from the last test I just did that Q21 is okay and Q17 is okay. Well, kind of. I didn't actually fully test Q17. Let's go back and do that before I forget. I didn't fully test it. That was giving a interesting reading, wasn't it, between base and emitter? But there is a 330 ohm resistor between the two, so that's probably what's causing that. Um, okay, so let's go back here again. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's what's causing that. There's that resistor between the junctions. Yeah, that's that's okay. So Q17 is all right. Um, so that's okay, that's okay, so I need to check, check Q25, just eliminate all those, and if those are okay, then the likelihood of it being the op amp is very, very high. So that is Q25 just there. So there's a little bridge across there, so that's, let's see, 3, pin 3 is a straight internet resistor network. Looking at something else as well, so this one there, one, two, three, goes into there. It was just a four, five, six, seven. Yes, I'm wondering about this blob of gunkus on here, whether that's causing issues because I suspect it would. Very stiff on there, that doesn't really want to come off. Let's just do it the other way, shall we? Hit it with a hammer. All right. Here we go. All right. It's gone now. <laughs> All right. Um, so, that will be the base there, because I think it will jump straight to there. Yes, it does. So we've got 0.67 there, 0.67 there. Yeah, that uh, that transistor's fine. So the transistors all look alright. So uh, that means it's most likely that op-amp. So one of the interesting things is, well, uh, one of the check tests I did was measuring the signal out of the, the trigger levels on the on the rear jack, right? And it says here, it goes to the rear panel, A and B trigger levels. Now I tested those, they were okay. So... Well, they're slightly different. No, 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 they're exactly the same. So, those both measures are okay on every panel, which is, interests me slightly. Maybe, 
maybe with the input in there it's skewing it or something maybe but I don't know when I did that test they both measured okay I know it's come from here at least it appears to so I'm still not 100% convinced I mean this relay here could be dodgy uh, one and what pin is that one seven is it one seven eight RLE one RLE where's that one A D G F come on with E is H I E okay and that's pin one there so I will E is uh, where the hell is it? It's here somewhere. It's in this area. Right up here. There we go. So that's pin one. This is really hard to see what this footprint is doing. Between one and seven eight. Well seven eight are supposed to be linked together, so that puzzles me slightly. Because I don't see them being linked together. It's not the easiest thing to interpret. I think there's a pin there. No pin there, pin there, no pin there, pin there, pin there. Let's see if I can get any kind of continuity here. Alright, so pin 1 appears to be the common. Hmm. Nothing. That's interesting. It may not be active until it's actually powered up though. Um, pin 14 goes through a capacitor. That'd be seven and eight there, would it? I don't know. Those are linked together. That must be seven and eight there. So it must be six. Is there a six? I hate trying to interpret things like this when it's a bit vague. Doesn't show six. Those are definitely linked together. I wonder. It's going up to here. Is there an issue with this relay? If that relay is not shut when it's supposed to be shut, then that could cause a problem. So let's push this front panel back on again, power it up, and see if I can turn something from that relay. put it right back on properly but I just want to try and interpret what's going on with this relay here I'm, I'm thinking as I, th I think I said it um, I believe it's to do with the switching of the channel A to C um, connections so let's have a look voltage I don't know which pins are which. I'm guessing that the ones which it doesn't mention are the coil. Although it doesn't seem to have a coil connection. That is also interesting. There's no pin. So I'm getting a voltage 
3.5 volts between here and there, right? If I go to uh, channel, uh, channel C, still 3.5 volts. Still nothing there. So I mean, I'm not entirely sure I'm measuring accurately. I'm not sure I've got that right. Um, but I'm not seeing anything happening here. Those relay pins here? They might be. Is that pin one? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it could be pin one, two there. It could be one, two. Because there's that's possible. Maybe. Turn this back off again. Ah, there we go. Alright. So I don't know why that's switching. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be switching for. Not hearing any relays clicking actually, so it might be some other function, but there appears to be a connection between if that is pin one there, um, so between one and those ones up there, there is a connection, so it may be okay. Um, what else can I check when I'm under here? This video is going to be going for ages, isn't it? While well, I'm waffling on trying to figure this thing out. Um, so that's okay, that's okay. That relay appears to be shut between 1 and 7 and 8, so which is what I'd expect it to be. Um, so signal comes in, sampled here, signal comes in there as a base signal, so I should probably get the scope on it and see what I can measure as well. Let's get this hooked up again. Okay, uh, I want to stick this on Earth, one which won't fall off, hopefully. Uh, right. So I've got a. Oh, 26 megahertz signal going in, but yeah, whatever. Um, just probing around just to see what I can see. Right, so I believe it's pin one. I think that's the input there. And yep, sure enough, 26.5 megahertz, which is what I've got going in. Okay. With a DC offset. So that's on pin one of that relay. So I'll be careful not touching things around the back end because it's, you know, mains powered, 240 volt. <laughs> don't, don't kill myself. Alright. Um, so pin one coming in there, I've got a DC offset. Find the pin again. And that is a three volt Yeah, three volt peak to peak. Eight volt um voltage level. Eight volt DC offset, three volt peak to peak. At that point. So I should be able to measure the same over here. And yes, sure enough I do. So one oh two which would be a uh, 1k, uh, which would be here, yep. 
so that is there but where's the DC offset coming from is it coming from is it coming from the output of the op amp and through this transistor here pulled up by this resistor or is it coming from this way I can't come in other way it's a capacitor ah of course it's obvious isn't it blocking cap right there so it has to be coming from this side that DC offset which may be normal uh, but now I've got a cover off I can look at the other side and do exactly the same measurement in the same place um, so I need to find the other matching part basically on this side um, wow <laughs> Okay, it's here somewhere though. I know it. It's not exactly mirrored, which is a bit of a shame because if it was exactly mirrored, it'd be really easy to find it, but it's not. Um, of course, there's no relay. It changes things somewhat. So, I've got to find what. Transistor there. This is probably not the most exciting part of the video. <laughs> uh, make sure they're coming together. Make sure those pins again. So I'm looking at pin six of both devices. So that's that one there which is say 8 volt DC offset and pin 6 of this device no DC offset so pin 2 no DC offset pin 3 nothing pin 2 has a DC offset pin 3 doesn't so pin 3 has a DC offset where's that coming from and that is about 3.7 volts and that's on the input. Sorry, pin two, not pin three. Uh, so that's not. That's on the output from the voltage divider, which comes from where? I think it's here. Yes. So that's pin one there, of the voltage divider. There should be nothing. Here's the B. Two. That's pin three, which is high voltage. That's pin four, high voltage. Pin five is higher again, I think. Yeah, not by much. That's what it appears to be anyway. But also on that one, two, three, four pin, f three, four, one, three. That's pin five. On pin five, I'm also seeing the frequency, like I, I'm supposed to be. So I'm seeing the frequency there. Um, which is what I'd expect to see and then we've got the capacitor there which is doing DC blocking and and part of the feedback and then there's also the main feedback which is the serial voltage that, that resistor divider so really I need to just try and determine whether um, the voltage is coming from here or somewhere else or is it coming from QC1 so that was the base I'm 
I've got 8 volts there, 8.4 volts with the frequency in it. At the base. Which is coming from the op amp. Has to be because that's the only place that the DC voltage can come from. Well, at least partially. Mm. If the op amp isn't driving pin 6 correctly, so pin 6 was well, that one there again. Let's go volts on it. That should be turning on Q23. Oh no, that's a PNP. That's turning off Q23. Is it 25? 25, I think. Yeah, I think it's 25. Q25. So that's turning that off because that's a PNP device over here, which has got negative 10.6 volts on one side and positive 8.8 .8 volts on the other. Q25 isn't being turned on by the op amp. And say pin 2, oh sorry, 2 is over here. It's got three volts on it, and so shouldn't pin six also have three volts on it? Yeah, this up amp must be fried. It must be. Pin six has got eight volts on it, and there's no other connections on pin six. So the up amp is putting out eight volts. Pin 2 has got 3.8 volts on it. Pin 3 has got 0 volts on it. Pin 4 minus 6.2. Pin 7 minus 11.2 which means it has got a, a negative bias because the, the power supplies aren't perfectly matched it'd be if it, in zero point it'd actually be slightly um, is it right? which one's lower? Oh no, slightly positive biased. I'll get that right. That's negative 10.6 and positive 11.2. So it's going to be 0 0.6 volt positive bias in that condition. Yeah, I'm sure this op amp's fired. I'm sure that's what's wrong. Because the voltages just don't make sense. You should see the same input and output voltages or a ratio if it's like a voltage divider set up. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's the up amp's gone. Now, it is pin for pin identical to other op amps, but it's got a very high input impedance. So, I will probably take that out and um, put a socket in and try another op amp and to see what happens so we shall come back after I've got that done ok I've got the op amp out I was going to solder in the socket I've already got it in place once my iron warms up I'll solder it in and then I shall find another uh, another op amp and pop it in and see if anything changes um, this this op amp says it's got a very high input impedance and um, 
It's also got a strobe on pin 8. Um, I'm not quite sure what it actually does, but the actual... Um, this device doesn't use that feature. It's not connected. So th that pin 8 isn't used. So that, that actual aspect doesn't matter. So really all I really need to do is try and find an op amp and see if it will work. So first things first, let's get this thing tagged in there. Make sure the thing's flat on the board, if I can find it on my fingers. Okay, that's right down there. Okay. Be a double sided board, I've got to try and make sure the solder goes all the way through. I haven't used any extra flux, um, usually, I don't need to. This solder's pretty good. Sometimes I have to, but uh, not often. Also, try not to heat the board up too much either. Um, I don't want to accidentally lift the tracer or anything like that. That'd be bad. Okay, I think that's okay. This one is looking a little bit dodgy. But, uh, and take a brush. The brush of all uses. I guess a lot of uses brush. Because I've bent these pins over a little bit, it's tinted the snag. But yeah, yeah. That's right. This is gonna be a long video. Wow. I might have to break this up into a few parts. Okay. Right now, I'm going to stop this video for a second and try and find a op amp to drop in there. I'm sure I've got some. Right, right here with a uh, UA741 CP. Um, it's close. <laughs> it's an op amp. It's got the same pin out. Um, this is straighten his pins up. If you haven't got one of these icy pin strainers, get one of those too. These are definitely worth having. Okay, now. Drop that in. Then we'll see if it changes anything. Also, I've been really careful. I've taken the other op amp out to make sure that um, it uh, doesn't get damaged or anything. So I've got it sitting just on the side here, just in case I need to put it back in because um, I'm not 100% sure that's what's wrong. Only about 90% sure. All right, so that's in. Power up. And let's do some voltage measurements. Okay, so you got pin two, nothing. Pin three, nothing. Pin six, nothing. Yeah, it looks promising. It's different. Okay, so you want frequency A. And the indicator light's gone out. So let's see if it starts. starts uh, I'm string a sentence together. Let's see if this starts to work now. <laughs> Ta da! 
Yeah, but hey, works. I was right. It was the op amp. <laughs> now, the question is, can I carry on using this one, or do I need to get the exact part? So let's look at some input levels and see if it needs that for sensitivity or something. So that's now 100 millivolts. 10, oh, 10 millivolts or what, not 10 volts. 10 millivolts, still going. Try and get so you can see the flashing light. 5 millivolts. Yeah, there we go. 8 millivolts. So that's the same as it was before, pretty much, on the other, on the other side. Do channel B. You'll see it triggering at least. Um, 5 millivolts. Still there. 2 millivolts. Gone. All right. So, and channel C is, is actually quite sensitive. So, um, so I'll do this channel C now. You see channel C is actually still working. That's on 2 millivolts. So, uh, channel C is very sensitive. Yeah, 1 millivolts too too little. So, um, yeah, that's it. Channel A is fixed. Awesome. So that's the first part. Um, increase the level again. There you go, 2 millivolts. So, yep, it works. Now, obviously this frequency is wrong because it's warming up. The, oscill you know, the oscillator oscillate is cooled down and what have you. So, um, now that's what's wrong there. It does actually come and settle quite close to correct frequency. Um, I haven't actually had it on long enough to calibrate properly yet. That'll be something I'll do later on. I'm not worried about it just yet. First thing is to get the thing to work, and I've got it to work. So, yes, brilliant. Okay, so we'll make that part one complete. Definitely part one. I'm going to have to do another part and do the front panel again. Oh, maybe I won't. I've already done that 991. 1991 video, and that's exactly the same. So I'm not going to do another part. I'll just do this. This is it. The one video. So subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Tell me what you think. Op amps. Lovely things. Not necessarily easy to troubleshoot. But this one was okay. Catch you later.